So you've looked at Schoology assessments and your mind is just blown because there's so many options and you don't know what half of them do, but I've got your quick help right here, everything you need to know to at least get you started on the awesome options that we have in Schoology for assessments. So let's go. Help me out by liking, subscribing, and turning notifications on. So, forewarning, this video is going to be long because there's a bunch of different options. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a list for you. Uh, it'll be in the comments so that you can know kind of where, what time frame to go to the video. Um, to find the particular or specific type of question that you're looking for. Okay, so when we're adding an assignment, not assignment, assessment. I'll get that right. All right, so when we're adding an assessment, the first thing that it's going to ask you to do is give it a name. So for me, I'm going to give it practice test. And I'm going to make my students do a practice test too <clears throat> every um, at the beginning because they're going to have to get familiar with this because this is the first year we've used Schoology. And, and you can give some, you know, generic instructions um, that you would put here. Um, you can give it a time limit. So for me, I would not want that to take all day. Um, so we'll probably do like 15 minutes or so, one of each type of question randomly ordered uh, possible points that's fine here's what you give the students options for when they're taking the test they have options on the right hand side they can flag it to let them know to go back and view it later they can eliminate answer choices so if it's multiple choice they'll have the option to strike through an answer so they don't have to uh, look at it anymore because they know that's not the right answer if you want them to use a calculator or a ruler you can do that protractor that's nice Highlight text, notepad. Um, again, the notepad is a little iffy um, as far as what it lets them do, um, but you can turn that on for them if you want. All right. How many uh, can do you want them to review the results after it is submitted? Uh, I do not do that because I don't want them sharing answers with their classmates in a different period. And how many times you want them to submit? So it's a practice test. It doesn't it doesn't really matter so you can save those changes and then over here in the other tab we go to questions so the first one we're just gonna go down the list right here give you everything you might want to know so a multiple choice question we can ask the question you know uh, so for me let's go who is your favorite seventh grade math teacher all right so in my school there's only one seventh grade math teacher so there we go so it's you know coach miller or for me for my students i'll probably put mr coach miller there we go all right and then we got coach hinkle go all right and of course my name's the correct answer because I'm the only math teacher in seventh grade uh, if you want to you can also make it to where they have to select multiple responses so which of the following you know you can do multiple answers shuffle the options up so it's not the same so my name's not the top on every student that's just again they, they have some stuff built in here to help you with cheaters all right, so I have, that's multiple choice. So we have those options. Two, true, false. Pretty self-explanatory, all right? True, false question. You have the same options if we want to do that, okay? Click the X up there. Matching, 
this one I, I really it's a drag and drop sort of matching type questions you can add um, options here and here all right so um, match the teachers with the subjects if I could spell or subject taught all right so if we want to do again mr. coach Miller coach Hinkle miss teal and miss Crowley all right so we have math, science, uh, civics, and English. Now, if you wanted to give them more answer choices, so PE, see if they're paying attention, um, music, uh, what else? We have art, um, and or you know, ISIS. There we go. So let's throw that in there. Maybe I made an extra one I didn't want to. And then down here, you give the answer key. So for, you know, we got math, science, civics, and English. Exact match. I do not want a partial match. Um, duplicate responses. You can allow them to do that. That way, you know, they could put three math teachers. So like if you had a school where you had multiple math teachers, if you want to do this, you could do that. Um, or multiple things go to the same question. You're trying to get that DOK, DOK level, you know, three or, uh, type question. So I click save on that. There, there is the matching portion. All right. Ordering. Same difference. Order when you type in the answers here, um, A, B, C, D, if you wanted to do that. You can drag these around to set the order that you want them to put them in so that you can know what is correct and what is not. Fill in the blank text. All right. This one's pretty neat. Okay. So if you wanted to put something um, in here, over here up on the bar where we have our options, this little R with the dotted box around it puts a response, okay? And this is where they would have, to, and then I can fill in the correct answer down here. I want an exact match. And so when I give them this question, it'll have a blank right there. They'll have to fill that in. It'll be a little box for them, and they have to fill that in. Fill in the blank drop down. Same options. All right, we have same thing you click the little R over here and you can give them multiple options so Miller and oops let me click that Hinkle there we go all right when I do that it gives them two options to drop down and pick for that question okay moving right along so we have fill in the blank drag and drop so this is exactly like the matching uh, portions. You can add possible answers here. And the students would have these drag and they would put it in the blank or the box. And you set it up the same way. You click the little R to put it in and I could have option one or option two. And then for my answer key, I would just put the one in the box for whichever one was correct so that it will match with the students, okay? Fill in the blank, drag and drop. Short answer essay. That one should be pretty self-explanatory. The thing is, uh, when you give them a, a question here, you can pick what formatting options they have. So if you want them to have a formula editor, you can for math class, uh, special characters. If you want them to be able to insert an image, you can do that. If you click on it and it's blue, that means the students have access to it. If you want to take it away, like if you don't want them to worry about bold, italicized, underline, um, or any of that, you can take all that away and you, they don't have to worry about anything else as far as that goes. You can give them a word limit and you can give make it available or visible to them. 
and then you can click whether or not to even allow them to submit if they went over the word limit or not. All right, audio. I think this one's pretty cool. Um, you can actually give a question, and what this one does is it allows the students to give you an audio submission back. So they would record their voice. So I think this would be great for maybe teachers that are trying to help their students with speech. Maybe they have some sort of, um, maybe a speech pathologist that had uh, access to Schoology and they're helping students with that. Or a Spanish teacher that wants to hear them pronounce their Spanish words. It would be great for that. Okay, so we have that short uh, audio. Video is the same thing as audio. They can record their own video if you would like them to do that. A file upload gives them the option to upload a file. So for me, um, you know, I might make them upload their scratch work at the end of their test. They could upload that uh, for me. Label an image. Okay, again, this one's pretty neat. If I wanted to pick some sort of image for my students. Um, so I'm just gonna pick this random picture here and so they have this picture and then I could have a response box uh, so they would have to drag the response to this spot okay and then possible responses okay I could put that and so th those would be their two options and then Obviously, I'm a loser, so I'm going to make that the correct answer choice. All right, so that's a way that you could do that. Let's say I don't want to save that question. All right, so, all right, moving right along. We're going pretty good. So that's how you would label an image. Highlight hotspot, highlight image, and highlight text. I honestly do not find any of those highlight things very useful. I'm sure you might could highlight some text and figure that out, and that would be fine. But other than that, I could not find any uses for them. So there you go. All right. Math short answer. It's the same as any other short answer underneath, but it gives you different options for them. I am not going to go through and look at all these keyboards uh, for you. You can play around with it, but you can give them different types of keyboards and symbols for them to uh, text in different options there so and the last one is a number line I'll be honest with you you can't do a whole lot with this um, you just you add the possible responses down here but then it gives you um, no option to change the name on those um, you can you can add a bunch of options down here but there is no way to change the name from option A, option B, option D, option C. There's no way to change any of those possible responses. You can just add one and then it's blank down here. I don't know if they for, uh, forgot to do something. You have the option to do some stuff down here with your number line if you want to, but I don't know really why this would be very useful to you because you cannot change uh, these. So I guess if you wanted to type up here and tell them what each of them were, then I guess you could do that. But other than that, I don't really know why this one was useful. Okay. And the last one is a chart. If you wanted them to do some different stuff uh, with their chart, you can name the titles here additional setup options allow me to do a bar chart line chart histogram dot plot line plot there's a lot of options here i understand that but there are plenty uh it's pretty self-explanatory as far as typing in the labels here all right last thing let's say that i clicked cancel and for some reason um I wanted to go back and look at something in my resources and then come back. If I click edit on this course, edit on this test, all it lets me do is edit the title. If you want to actually edit the test, you click the test and then you have the setup and the questions that you can change here um, to give yourself different options. Okay, 
So I know that's been long, it's longer than my normal videos, but if there's something you have are struggling with or you can't figure out in Schoology as far as this assessments go, like I said, bare minimum, this gets you started. That's pretty much everything you need to know to get you started. And then you can play with it from there. If there's something you still can't figure out, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Again, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you.